Amen, amen. People of God, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. He is good. Look at your neighbor and says, we come this far by faith. We have come this far by faith. You ready to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Come on, stand to your feet as we praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We come this far. Thank you. 
to a second chance. Looking forward to a second chance. So would you stand to your feet as I welcome to this whole platform, this pulpit, I introduce the son, my husband, my friend, my pastor, your pastor, Pastor John Lanier, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's put our hands Just look at the neighbor and tell them you have another chance. Come on, you only really mean it now. Look at them and tell you I have another chance. All right, and it's really, you we all have another chance. Okay? In just a few hours, in just a few minutes, we will be bringing in the year 2024. You have an opportunity for a second chance, people of God. You might have attempted some things in 2023 and failed miserably. You will have set goals and aspirations and have dreams and you will fall short. You may have wanted to travel the world but didn't have the finance to do so. Well, a new year is creeping upon us and you have a second chance to do so. There were many persons that had set goals 
and made a decision that they are going to be their best version of themselves in 2023. But they are no longer here. But you who are here today have a second chance at life. You have a second chance to achieve those goals. You have a second chance to make an impact in everywhere that you go. Tonight we have already heard testimonies. We would have already sung songs of praises. We have done all the formalities and now we have, it's time for the word of God. Tonight for a brief moment until 10 minutes, a few minutes to midnight, we will explore on a parable spoken by the great philosopher, the great teacher that, that existed this planet and his teaching is still relevant in today. today. We, we read of a parable that we would have read countless times in our lives, countless times we were heard it in Sunday school, we were heard it over the airways, wherever we go we were heard it. It speaks of a father, a father and his two sons. The father in the parable is a representation of God and the two sons is a representation of both you and I. This morning, tonight, we want to separate it into three segments. The first segment is we are all given an inheritance. In Psalms 24, verse 1 and 2 says, The earth is the Lord and it's all contains. The world that those that dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. Everything that the Father owned is yours once you are a child of God. You are an heir to the kingdom of God once you are a child of God. We are all familiar with the term of inheritance. Inheritance, like many of us know, will be a passing of wealth and resources within the family from the youngest, from the oldest to the youngest. Sometimes it, it involves death of a loved one, of a parent, of a mother, of a father, but not all times. There are times when a parent will pass on its inheritance while the parent is still alive. Inheritance, people of God, is based on relationships. Relationships. Most inheritance are, are, are relieved because we have had a relationship with the giver. Our inheritance is in Christ. And in order for us to receive that inheritance from him, we need to have a relationship with him. God also promises us inheritance. That with that inheritance comes a few stipulations that will only be available to each and every one of us until the time of death, which is eternal life. If we look at the nation of Israel, Israel inherited the land as God's chosen children, even though they did not always act faithfully. Here we have a young son that asks for his, his inheritance now. I don't know if that sounds like many of us here today. We, when we want something, we want it now. We are now people. We, we, we just want it now. Not later. Not next week. He requests it now. But as a father, he doesn't hold it against him. He doesn't hold it against him. And we would understand that even if, if, if we were to put ourselves in that situation of the father, we know as human beings we will make all kind of excuses. We will take them to Japan and back on telling them why we can't give them that inheritance because it's not the appointed time. When we look at it, the father gave them what he had at. And according to Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 17, the younger son re receives one third of his estate after it was divided and the elder son received the remaining portion of it. Each and every one of us know here today that an inheritance is only when we, we will only receive that inheritance when we do and when we fulfill the commandment that is laid out in the stipulation of serving God. Secondly, the choice we make has consequences. Each and every one of you in this building today make choices on a daily basis. We choose to come to church. We choose to go to work. We choose to get in a relationship. We choose to make friends. But at the end of the day, there are consequences and there are things 
that would benefit you from joining that relationship. The Bible tells us that this young man took the share of his estate and joined it to a far country, somewhere not to be seen. And we all know every time we want to do mischief or we want to do foolishness or we want to go ahead and, 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 and do things that is not pleasing and rightful in the sight of God, we go to a far country where nobody knows us. Nobody can see us. And we know that the devil convinces us that sin can be hidden from God's eyes. This is why, the reason why many of us move away. If you understand that sin will take you further than you intended to go. So that is why when you go further, when you go far away to commit your sin, you know, you know what you're watching so you can do what you care, no matter what. But I want to assure you tonight is that everyone of know that well, in the eyes of God, in the eyes of God, we know that God is always watching. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, he is always watching. His eye is, almost, is always over us. He's watching over us. The devil convinces us that when we go and hide in places, that hey, nobody can see us. We notice that this young man went away. He went to a far country and he enjoyed himself. Like I said, he lived life. Everyone knows that where there is an abundance of wealth, there is happiness. For those persons that are outside of the world, if, if, if we have a lot of money and we go into and you go into the club and you say, you know, bottles on me, bottles on me, drinks on me, all on me, food on me. But we have to understand that there comes a time when you will not have it all. There comes a time when you will be in lack. This young man went out there and splurged. He lived like a king. He lived like a, like, like, like a king. He lived like someone who has all the wealth in the world. The Bible tells us that he wasted his possession on prodigal living. If we look at the word prodigal, it is defined as an addiction to wasteful expenditure of money, time, or strength or even living a lavish lifestyle. Many of us throughout the year 2023 would have engaged in prodigal living. What do you mean, Pastor, when you say you would have, we would have engaged in prodigal living? Many of us might have, might have joined or gathered into a relationship, wasted our time on people that didn't benefit us. We wasted our time on, on, on our on, and strength in relationship that wasn't progressive. Better yet, we would not have spent enough time honoring and serving God or, and for the believers spending time in the presence of God so that when we spend time in the presence of God, we will get that ammunition that we so deserve. We will get that strength that we need to be able to fight any devil in hell, any devil on this earth. We must understand that we are just wasting our time. We were wasting our time during 2023, and now 2024 is upon us, and now we must no longer waste the time. The time is short. Ecclesiastes tells us that a time to be born, a time to die. For everything under the heaven, there is a time for everything. A time to die, a time to laugh, a time to speak. We must get our priorities in order. If we are not getting out, if we don't get our priorities in order, we will be able to experience dire consequences on the church by the choices we make. We are looking for temporary fulfillment rather than eternal fulfillment. The only eternal fulfillment is found in God. The choice we make this year has us where we are today. We may, have, we may have fallen short of some of the goals, some of the plans that, would, that, would, that we would have set for in, in 2023. But where you are today is a testament of what you had planned for with the choice that you have made. And I am here to encourage you today, each and every one of us, is that be careful with the choice that you make. Because the choice that you make has dire consequences. This young man made a choice to go there and request the wealth to go there and request his, 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 his inheritance. And because of it, he experienced life. He experienced life. But after what he spent, or after he spent all that he had, there was a famine that rose in the land. 
He was, there was an extreme drought in the land. I don't know about you, but in 2023, many of us would have endured famine in our lives. Whether it may be famine in our financial life, whether it may be famine in our home, whether it may be famine, wherever it is, we would have endured famine. We would have endured some type of drought in our lives during the course of 2023. We were in need. We didn't know where the dollar was coming from. We didn't know how we were going to pay the bills. We were in fear because of the, 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 the BC or BPL, we call them. We would still hide behind our doors and making, looking through the window to see when the bus is coming by. On the truck, on the car is coming by. Just so they don't turn off our light. So that we could meet them at the door and tell them, hey, guess what, please? I am about to go to the, to, to, to the office and pay it now. But I tell you, we were riding on grace. We were riding on God's grace in 2023. And I must tell you that the grace that God gave us is sufficient for each and every one of us. I am sure every one of you would have experienced some sort of drug. Nothing in your wallet. But hey, God made a way. This young man realized that there was nothing left for him to do. He persuaded a local, a local farmer to hire him as a, 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 a person that feeds swines. If we know in the Jewish culture, it was, a, it was a, a job or it was an occupation that was degradable. Or persons didn't value, you didn't have any respect. And imagine this young man coming from a home whereby he could have requested an estate. There was something that is left over for him, but he wanted it now. Each and every one of you here today have an estate. And that estate is only in God. Each and every one of you here now have the opportunity to have a second chance. This young man wanted to be able to feed swines all because he was in lack. All because a farming took place. The wages that he received were so poor. He even envied eating the, 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 the pods which men ate when they were desperate. Desperate measures call for desperate times. So you will find yourself in life, even throughout 2023, we were desperate for something. We were even desperate for that relationship. So you lowered your standard. You lowered your principles. You lowered yourself just so you, he could tell you he loved you. Mind you, I want for you to understand that you are a child of God. You are a child of God and you deserve better. We all are children of God and we deserve better. So don't allow anyone to put you down. Don't allow yourself to be taken down or lower your standards just so you can please them. I say please God. And when you please God, you will see that the doors will be open for you. That you see the blessings will pour upon you. And when it begins to pour, there will be not enough room to receive. We say that even though in chapter, in verse 16, it says that no one gave him anything. In this life we live, we understand that things are not going to just fall into your lap. People are not just going to come to you and give you something. You have to earn. You have to work for it. And that is why this young man didn't have to worry about anything. When he was at his father's home, he didn't have to work for anything. It was given to him on a, on a silver platter. You and I have the privilege of being a blessed individual. You and I have the privilege of being able to stand before people, stand before countries, stand being able to represent your countries in, in, in ways you never even imagined. But you have an opportunity today of a second chance. This young man realized that he, he, he couldn't deal with it any longer. He couldn't deal with it any longer. This young man went from living his best life to living like a rock star and then feeding the swines. And he understand and he realized, what's, what, what's the next thing left for me to do? What else can I do? I've already been to the top and now I'm to the bottom. It goes to show you in 2022, you would have had some high, high moments and you would have some low moments. But I come to assure you today that in 2024, as we go into 2024, we have to expect greater things. We have to expect better things. You gotta, you gotta put yourself in a, in a position. You have to reposition yourself so that you can achieve greater things. 
You want to procrastinate all through 2023. And I come to tell you today that procrastination is dead. Procrastination is behind us. And in 2024, we will no longer procrastinate. We will be, we will be focused on what is ahead of us. We notice that no one gave him nothing. And finally, we realize that reality steps in. He began to pull himself together, just like you and I. Sometimes we got to hit rock bottom before we can understand what we are going through in our lives, that we must give it up. We must surrender our lives. We must surrender ourselves to God. And it's only when we surrender ourselves, we will begin to see things change in our lives. He began to put himself together. While outside, he got a glimpse of what it means to be on the low. He knew he, he felt, he experienced what it means to be in what. He realized that he wanted to be at peace. He realized that he was missing something. He was missing his father. He was missing luxury at home. And even for all the young people in here, you all know, when you're at home, you'll leave the light on 24-7. But wait until you grow up and you start paying your own bills, that light will be turned off every minute. So you got to understand, enjoy life when it comes to you. Enjoy it now. But appreciate the good times. Appreciate the bad times. Because in this life, there will come good times and bad times. But you got to be able and you got to be strong enough to be able to endure it all. Remember, he was missing something. Remember the choice that, that you make will determine where you are going. He began to compare his father's servants that they were all they always had something to eat and they had even more to spare. So imagine you thinking of your life back then and you thinking now you said, hey, my life had it better when I was young. But hey, if you had it better, then make the right decision. Make the right choice. If you don't make the right choices, then you will be stuck in the position where you are at. He did what was right. He put away pride in the back of him. He put away arrogance in the back of him. He put away his fears in the back of him. And he decided to come back home. Home is where the heart is. We know that home is a place of, of humble abode. Home is a place of peace. I'm sorry to say, I'm sorry to say that some home today don't have any peace. But home is a place where you can do what you feel whenever you feel, how you feel, and with whom you feel. Simply because of the fact that it is home, it is a place of, 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 of comfortability, it is a place of comfort, it is a place of joy. He decided to go back home. And even on his way going back home, he began to prepare his message, to prepare what he's about to say to his father. That's just like you and I. We would do something wrong in our lives, and, and when we do something wrong, we would prepare ourselves right before we get there. Because we already know what the outcome will be. This young man already said, made up in his mind that when I go back home, I'm going to begin to, you know, begin to prepare myself, prepare my mind for this disappointment. But you have to understand today that in, in preparing, he says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. Because of what he did in the past, he knew that the wrong that he has done would have been held against him. And he said, you know what? I'm going to go back and be a servant because I can no longer live in this condition. If you want God to be able to move in your life, you got to say, Lord, I am no longer to be called a servant. Lord, I, I, I give myself back to you. Lord, I, I, I'm asking you to use me. And finally, he says that God forgives and accepts us just as we are. And he arose, and the Bible tells us that he arose and came to his father. When he was still a great way off, his father ran to him. And his father embraced him, his father kissed him, and had compassion with him. Hey, I don't know about you, but if I see I would do something wrong, and when I go home and I see my father just being able to welcome me and open up, I feel good. Simply because I know, I know that, hey, I could always come home to my father. And not just fathers, but even mothers. You know that even all the mess that you will engage in, even all the things and the words that you have spoken against your parents, and they still welcome you with open arms. 
It is the same way as God welcomes us in open arms. Even though you would have engaged in, 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 in things that was not of him, even though you would have blasphemy, you would have slept with, you, you would have became a harlot, you would have teeth, you would have, you would have, uh, Jesus, you would have done everything in the dictionary. But God still says, hey, I am here with my arms open up wide, ready to receive you. And they said that the Father had compassion on him, on him despite what he had done. He had lived, I mean, lived his life in the past. God gave him a second chance. And he says to my son, my daughter, I have covered you. You are my own, a chance to reclaim your inheritance and more. The Father didn't see the sins of the son. He saw his child. He saw his son. He saw you and I. The Father forgave him and all that he had done. Christ will do the same for us. If you were to come back home, come back to him and allow him to direct you, to allow him to instruct you. Throughout 2023, you have done it your way. But now God is saying to you, I want you to do it my way. Come back home, sister. Come back home, brother. Come back home, my child. Come back home, my husband. Come back home, my wife. God is saying to you, come back home. Before we can celebrate each other, there needs to be forgiveness. Many of us are, we, we, we are living in an unforgiving world whereby we will pass people on a daily basis and we refuse to forgive them. What is so wrong and what is so hard about forgiving one another? In order for you to move ahead, you cannot, Jesus, you can't move ahead because you are still holding them in your heart. And this year, in 2024, we want to start the year off, right? Begin to forgive. Forgive all those who have wronged you. Even forgive those who even haven't wronged you. Forgive them. And confuse their mind. You know, you know what, what, what really amazes me is when you, when you forgive someone, and when you forgive them, and even though they will look at you like, what do you mean? Or in the back of your mind, you'll be saying, like, man, I be, I be slandering this person's name in the dirt. And I be, you know, just defaming their character, but they still, they still talk to me. Yeah. That's the love of God in them. That's God working through them. All right. And he said that the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. That represents the robe, represents dignity. Honor and acceptance forgives them. God wants to restore you in 2024, but not just in 2024. God wants to restore you now. You have already left your parents' home. You have already left the church. You have already left the things that you used to do to keep you closer to God, and you went out there and do what you have to do. Now God is saying to you today, hey, I want to restore you. I want to bring dignity back to you. The world and slander your name didn't, didn't tell you, you you was everything and you didn't do this and you didn't sleep with this person, you didn't sleep with that person, you didn't do everything in the book. But God says, I want to restore you, I want to give dignity back to you. God said he, he placed a ring on his finger. The ring represents authority and sonship. And Romans 8 and 15 says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out. The Lord wants to place that ring of your finger. The ring to call you that you are his child. That you are my child. That no weapon that formed against you shall prosper. This young man went away for quite some time. But yet when he came back, his father accepted him. Still considered him his son. Hey, it's only in God that you can get a second chance. The world gives you a second chance, but then there are some price you got to pay for it. There is something that is that is behind, uh, say we call it in, behind the scenes, or or it's not written in black and white. Hey, the world offers you something, but God can give you and more. He says that also the sandals on his feet represents not being a servant. In his mind, he said that I'm going to come back and become a servant for my father. But in those days, servants didn't wear sandals on their feet. So we realize that he received the best robe, received the ring on his finger, and even sandals to put on his feet. After being spending all that time in the hall pen, 
We also receive a father child to prepare a party that is held in its honor. We know calves were saved for special occasions. It was a celebration. This son was dead and is alive again, was lost and is now being found. And finally, the older brother who had been forgotten in this excitement was out in the field. And when he saw all of this, this party, and he saw everything that was going on, he said to himself, he said to the high school, what's going on? And they said to him that your younger brother who is who was lost and is being found is returned. This is a return celebration. What a joy it would be when we all come back to Christ. What a joy it will bring when you face your sins and be repentant of repent of your sins. When you say to God, Lord, I surrender it all. I surrender my life to you. He was angry. The son was angry and could not go in. The brother represented our pride and our selfishness. Sometimes we refuse to celebrate others because we are so prideful, because we are selfish. We only see ourselves in the picture rather than seeing God in the picture. God wants to say to us, I want to put away that pride. I want you to put away that self-centeredness, and I want you to come back home. I want you to turn to me. The young brother said, he, the other brother said, he never, had the, he never had the heart of his father because he complained to the father, father, I was with you all this time while, while Richard was out in the fields flirting himself. But God is saying to you, to you today, hey, it doesn't matter what Richard done. I am concerned about what you are doing. And God is saying to each and every one of us today, I am concerned with what you are doing. Son, he says that you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. All that I have is yours. If the young, if the elder son will remember that at the beginning, when the father divided his the inheritance, the other one received more. So that means he had nothing else to do with the money. Or he had nothing else to do with the wealth. He still had more. And he was right there home. He did not know where else to go because he was still living on the father's wealth. I say to you and I, you, each one of you here today, as you go into 2024, let us remember all the things that we would have endured in 2023. And know that in 2024, that I will receive I will reclaim my inheritance, which is in God. I would make the right choice to know that he the right choices. Once I make the right choice, I know there will come consequences that I am able to deal with, that I am able to benefit from. And thirdly, to know that God forgives me and accepts me. Don't ever think that there is no place for you in heaven. Don't think that there is no place for you in the family of God. You have been living your life in 2024. But I say to you today, in 2023, let us make it right with God. Make it right with God. I don't care what you have done in the past. The only thing I want for you to see is I want you to see God that is ahead of you. To know that he controls your future. He controls your destiny. He controls everything that you have in your possession. I want you, I don't want you to think that that guy may give you the satisfaction, temporary satisfaction. But it's only in God that gives you that eternal satisfaction that you will need, that you will never be in want. But as we begin to bring in this new year in less than three minutes, I want for us to take a time of reflection. Take a time whereby you're going to give praises unto God. You're going to say, Lord, this is my season. This is my time to recommit myself to you, recommit my life to you, recommit my family to you. Lord, I don't want to be like the prodigal son that wasted all of the possessions and wasted time. But Lord, I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to reclaim everything that was taken away from me. I'm going to surrender myself to you. And I'm going to say, Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way within my life. Have your way within my family. And even yet, have your way in my heart. And even as we begin to pray at this time, we're going to take a few minutes. 
before we welcome in the new year. And if there is someone here today that wants to say that I'm going to start 2024 in the right mindset, with the right attitude, with the right spirit, and I'm going to say, Lord, I want to start the year off with you. Because when I start the year off with you, I have a guaranteed success. I have a guaranteed victory. If you want to be that one, just raise your hand in the sanctuary, and even with the hands lifted up. Even if you want to be that one to say, Lord, I can recommit my service to you. But even those that have been in the church for quite some time, and you know you haven't been giving your best effort, your full participation in the furtherance of God's kingdom. And we know that in 2024, as central, as we reposition ourselves for kingdom advancement, we're going to say, Lord, I'm going to reposition myself for you to be able to use me like never before. Like never before. Father, with all hands lifted up right now, Father, even as your people stand before you today, Lord, we come to you with humble hearts, seeking, Lord, that you will do away, that you will have your way in our lives today. Father, I ask even right now that there may be some things that we may have been battling with, Lord. But Father, today I ask, Lord, that you will intervene. You will begin to transform my mind, Father God, that I will be able to be a transformer. That once I'm a transformer, Lord, that I will transform others. Lord, I may, I, you may have been living a life, Father God, that was pleasing, that was not pleasing unto you. But you make that decision today to say, Lord, I, from this day forward, Lord, I'm walking in victory. I'm walking towards my destiny. I'm walking towards greatness. I'm walking towards you, Lord. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, that, that as you come to me, Father God, that as you receive me into your arms, Lord, Lord, I forgive. Forgive me for all the sins that I have committed against you. Forgive me for all the things that I have done, Lord. And Lord, I offer myself to you today, Lord. Lord, take full control this very moment, Father God. And Lord, let this not be the time that we will just be here on the 31st of January, Father, of December, Father God. But make it our aim, Father God, that we will make a decision, Father, that we will walk with you every day of the week, Father God. Every second, every minute, every hour, Father God, that we will spend time in your word, Father God, that we will spend time in worship, Father God, that we will spend time in your presence, Lord. Lord, we ask for you an outpouring of your love upon us. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for all unrighteousness. Forgive us for the things that we have done. Lord, forgive us for even just being Father. We say thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you. Because you have put up with us, Father God. Because you have taken we, we, we have neglected you, Father. But Lord, you still show us grace. You still show us favor. You still grant us the privilege and the opportunity and the second chance. And Lord, we will use that chance wisely. We will take that chance and we will seize the moment. We will seize the opportunity. We will seize the opportunity to honor you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, and even on this day, we commit our families to you. Lord, we commit our marriages to you. Lord, we commit our children to you. Lord, we commit our careers to you. Lord, we commit our life in your hands, Lord. And to say, without you, Lord, we are nothing, Father God. Without you, Lord, we cannot go anywhere. Without you, Lord, we are empty. Lord, fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Fill us up with your grace, Father God. Lord, 2023 is up the door, Father God. And we welcome 2024, Father God, with a, with a steadfast mindset, Father God, with a committed heart, Father God, with a right spirit, Father God, on the right path today, Father God. Lord, direct us 
into greatness. Lead us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Lead us, Lord, right now, Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now. Lord, we bless you right now. Lord, we would have lost some friends. We would have lost some family members this last year, Father God. But Lord, we got you, Father God. We have you, Father God. And Lord, we will... Jesus. Lord, we will use... Jesus. Lord, we will depend on you, Father God. We're depending on you, Lord. Lord, to have your way right now, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. As we welcome 2024. To know that the pain is behind us. To know that 2023 is behind us. That all the doubts in 2023 is behind us. And we are focusing, we are reshifting our focus to 2024. We will not make any excuses in this year. But Lord, we will provide. You will provide for us, Father. You will lead the way, Father. And Lord, we will follow. We will follow you, Jesus. We will follow you in this year. We will follow you in 2024. We will follow you in 2024. Lord, and as we follow you, Father God, we will drag our children behind us. We will drag our husband behind us. We will take our husbands behind us. We will take our wives behind us. And Father God, we will lead by example. We will serve you. We will honor you. I want more in 2024. I know you want more in 2024. And together, in God's arms and God's hands, we will get more in 2024. Father, thank you for your service. We will be in enough to come into your sanctuary. And Lord, we know that our destiny awaits us, that greatness awaits us, and we wait in anticipation, we wait in expectation to see what you would do. And it says that eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard. Lord, we wait in expectation of your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Stand to your feet and say, In Jesus' name. Come on, you gotta stand to your feet in Jesus' name. See, some persons didn't have an opportunity to make it in 2024. But you now you are here and you are living proof. You are a testament to say what God can do. If God can do it. So if God can do this thing in your life, imagine what He can do. So just trust God. Trust God in the midst of uncertainties. Trust God in the midst of your time. Dark time. Trust God in the midst of terrible time. Trust God when even things are moving, but trust God even now. Trust God today. Trust God tomorrow. want to be with you, Jesus. Can we just take a few minutes just to sing this song, just want to be with you. King of glory, Jesus.
Father, and Spirit and more. No longer will you be in want. No longer will you have to be clean, clean from the swans. God says, I am setting up. I'm setting up some people in your life that will be a blessing to you. He says, I begin to open those doors that persons have closed. I'm beginning to open the doors. I'm beginning to break in the chains over your marriage. I'm beginning to break in the chain over your children. I'm beginning to break in the chain over your finances. I'm beginning to break in the chain over your life. Jesus. Jesus.
because greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. I decree and I declare over your life, over your family, over your career, over your endeavors, over those dreams, over those talents, over those gifts, that greater is coming. That greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Jesus. And even as we leave this place, but not from your presence, that we will remain in God's presence every opportunity. And if you want to join us, feel free to join us here this Sunday at 11 o'clock for our early morning worship. Our 5 a.m. Bible study, prayer meeting. Our Friday night youth meeting. Any one of the days. Please, find God before it's too late. Find God before it's too late. Find God. May the blessings and the peace of God abide in each and every one of you. May His love go with you. May His peace cover you. May His grace be sufficient for you. And may His Spirit never depart from you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, I don't know. I've been waiting all year. I've been waiting 365 days to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hug someone. Greet them. And even if you have, if you have left, if you want to start the year off right and so we're not seen into the church or start it off right in God feel free to do so Happy New Year